So logic gates implement, electronically implement logic. Implement logic electronically. Electronically. I think I've levered that enough. Imagine that you'd got a um, a box, uh, an imaginary box. What colour shall I use for the box? That one. So I've got a box. And inside that box, there was some electronic jiggery-pokery, which implemented Boolean operations. Right, so Boolean operations. Now, we've seen during the course so far three different Boolean operations. And we might have used them in programming as well. So we've got ands, ors, nots. Okay, and all three of those take um, an input, well, at least one input anyway. So we'll put input on that side. Some of them take two inputs, the AND and the OR gate take two inputs, the NOT gate takes just one. And they output a value which depends on the logical uh, processing of the input. Now then, if you remember, Boolean variables can only be 0 or 1, and the output can only be 0 or 1 as well. So they're ideally suited to electronic components. So electronics in there, because electronics are made of switches and so on and so forth. Now, it, it turns out that these logic gates here are the building blocks of the microchips that we use uh, in our computer systems today. So what might these little fellas look like? I'm going to just show you some pictures of some uh, logic gates. This is a logic gate right here. You uh, might recognise that it. it looks a little bit like... A computer chip well that's no um, no surprise really because it is this is actually an AND gate and there's a company called Farnell components and if you go on there and you stick in AND gate you'll see lots of pictures of little things like this now it's got five pins on it this AND gate I want to show you what the pins do and I'll just write down the what the, the pin um, the jobs at the pin the pin functions that's the word I was looking for this one up on the on the sort of far right hand side is the earth connection and this one on the top left is plus five volts all electronic components need some sort of power somewhere so two of the pins are always taken up with the power now that leaves us with three pins left now the three pins themselves are the inputs to the logic gate it's um this one we'd normally refer to as input A, this one we'd normally refer to as input B, and this one over here is the output of the gate, which we'd normally refer to as Q. Okay, let me show you what an OR gate looks like. Um, oh, it's exactly the same. That's um, somewhat surprising, but then maybe not somewhat not surprising. The, the, whole, the whole point about these packages is that the interiors, the internal components are different, but the packaging remains the same because they're designed to fit on a, a circuit board and you need all the pins to be the same distance apart. But inside that, if you could look at this, you'd see inside some different electronic circuitry. And these, and that would implement an OR um, Boolean operation using electronics. You've got the same kind of pins. This is a, the earth pin. This is the plus 5 volts pin there. You've also got, in common with the AND gate or the, the uh, two two inputs a and b and then an output q which is just over there so that's an and gate and an or gate and remember that that implements an and boolean operation and this implements an or boolean operation the last one's the not gate it looks exactly the same again no surprises there you've got a, an earth connection just on that side you've got a plus five volt connection there okay but in in contrast with the and and the or operation which are binary operators so they've got two operands a not gate or oh, didn't write that on there a not gate has only got is a unary operator so it's got one operand right so one of these pins is now not needed uh, and actually it turns out that the pin that's not used is that pin there this is used for input a and that's used for q and again uh, we'll look at the sort of more uh, conceptual operation of these gates a little bit later on. Right, so that's fine. They look beautiful if I want to see what they look like on a circuit board, but not a great deal of use if I'm trying to draw them in a diagram or something. So let's have a look what we do to draw them in a diagram. Basically, the AND gate, i.e. electronics which implements an AND 
logical operation looks a bit like this when you draw it. Um, not very good at drawing, I'm afraid, so we'll give it a go. Da, 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 da. Now, it, it, it may you may think, oh, he's just drawn a capital letter D. Um, that's exactly the way in which we actually remember that this is the symbol for an AND gate because it looks like a D and AND has got a D at the end of it. So if you need to remember what the symbol is, just remember the word AND and it'll tell you what the symbol is straight away. Normally, an AND gate's got your two inputs. They go on the left-hand side, so that's A and B. And the output on the right-hand side is, is Q. You don't, they don't have to be that way around. If you draw the gate the other way around, that's absolutely valid as well. So that's what an AND gate looks like if I draw it in an electronic circuit, a bit like the symbols for switches and batteries and all that sort of business, you know. Um, with, for an OR gate, what I tend to do with an OR gate is I tend to draw this bit first. It's kind of a little bit pointier. I don't know if you can even if I even draw it a little bit pointier than an AND gate. And it's not got a straight back on it. It's got a curved back. I think they're quite tricky to draw, to be honest. You remember that's the symbol for an OR gate, possibly because it's not the symbol for an AND gate, I guess, because it's not a capital D. Um, it's also curved at the back and so is the O in O, so it's entirely up to you how you remember it, I suppose. It's got an output Q, nice, and it's normally got two inputs. You can get AND and OR gates with multiple inputs, but we just go with the two input AND and the two input OR gates, and that's that one. Now, the NOT gate is, is slightly different. Again, it's only got one input, if you remember, the NOT gate. So I only have one line coming into it, one... Um, one wire, if you like, coming into it. It's actually completely different, drawn completely different to the AND and the OR gate. It's a triangle with a little circle on the right hand side where the output comes. That's actually a Q. Does it look like a Q? It does now. And I've got an input on that side which I'll normally give the, the letter A. They don't, they don't, these A, B, Q things, they don't have to be that. That's conventional. You could have whatever letters you wanted going in, whatever letters you want coming out. Tile up to you. Now then. Super fine if um, we want to draw them in circuit diagrams, but what if we want to, to write them down somewhere in an, an equation? And in fact, when you're using AND or a NOT operation, so Boolean operators like that, you can put them in algebra as well. So you've got, you've got algebraic um, symbols for them. Now, it turns out that the algebraic symbol for a an AND gate is this one. So it's like... Well, I'm going to say an upside down V. I think of it as the A in AND without the line going across it. So that again, that helps you to remember it. This one is the is a V shape. It's actually called a disjunction operator. That this is called a conjunction operator. But that's kind of that's Boolean algebra for you. Ooh, there we are. Now I'd remember that because it's not this. Up to you. The not operator is is slightly different. Actually, it's a bit of an odd one. It's on the top left hand side of your keyboard. Uh, just underneath the escape key normally and it's like a little left hand facing sort of I don't know what shape you'd call that it's like a pistol I suppose facing off to the left uh, that's called the negation operator and again if you were going to write them in an expression that's what you would do so if I was going to write these down for instance I'd so I'm going to represent this in algebra algebra so there's a bit of maths here so a and b equals q no matter that's how I'd write it down. I'd write this one A or B equals Q. And I'd write this one, well, this would be not A because this is a unary operator equals Q. Because that's a unary operator, it's only got one operand. So you'd normally write that afterwards. So there's the operation and then the operand. These have got two operators. Uh, wrong, two operands, so they're, they're called binary operators though, that's a conjunction, disjunction and a negation operator which is just there. So, whew, lots of ways of writing these things down. Last thing to do is to look at all the possible, whoops, all the possible inputs and outputs that you can get from these little fellas. Now, what I've done is I've set up what's called a truth table. Now, a truth table shows you, and if you think back to your binary business, right, it shows you all the possible combinations of the states of the inputs into the gate compared to the state of the output on the gate. So I'm going to go through these fairly quickly, I think. I'll just leave those there so we can see them. Um, what we'd normally have for an, for an AND gate is uh, three columns, right? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. The first column normally has the, 
the, the A input on it. So the first input doesn't have to be A, but it could be. This has the second one, and that one has a Q on it over on the right side over there. So A, B, and Q. Now we'll go through and put in all the different combinations of the inputs first of all and then we'll go through and work out what the output should be so first if you remember back to the binary encoding video if you watched that basically with two switches because these remember represent either inputs to a circuit or which can be switched voltages high or low whatever Ooh, um, and uh, what have we got so two so zero 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 one one zero and one one so there are all the possible inputs for that now it turns out that if the two inputs to the AND gate are zero the output is zero if the if, if the if a is zero and b is one the output still zero if a is um one and b is zero then the output is zero uh, and if A is 1 and, the, uh, and B is 1, the output is 1. So the logic behind the AND operation is that the output will be 1 or true if both of the inputs are 1 or true. So let's look at the operation of an OR gate. Same kind of idea. Whoops, I've just hidden my OR gate. What am I doing? There we are. So with an OR gate, you've basically got the same input. So we've got an A, B and a Q just there and then we go through the same pattern of the inputs that we had on the AND gate which is over here so that's 0 1 1 0 1 1 okay but in this time if if both the inputs are off or zero or false then the output is off and then, but an OR gate if either of the inputs is, is on the output will be on as well so that one that one and in in an, for an OR gate the output is 1 if they're both on. Now, there is a different type of gate called an exclusive OR gate, and for an exclusive OR gate, that would be 0. But please forget that I've just said that, because that's not, um, you know, it's a well, it's not difficult. It's just not things that you probably need to know. You might want to know them, but that's an entirely different thing. Now, last one to look at is the NOT gate. Um, there'll be people screaming at me now, saying, wow, but the NOT gates have only got one input. Uh, Mark, yeah, yes, yes, okay, I'm coming to that. I'm just explaining. Quite a common mistake people make with NOT gates is they draw the same table as they do with an AND and an OR gate. So, but I've, so I've drawn that on purpose so that I can show you that it's not this. So remember that with an AND gate, sorry, with the NOT gate, you've only got one input, which is just A. So you don't, so this column is Q. In other words, you don't use that column. So I'm going to scribble it out, right? Conversely, if you've only got one input, it can only have two possible states, zero and one. So you don't need these two rows either. So I'm gonna scribble them out. Right, it's a, it's a very common mistake that people make when they're drawing truth tables for logic gates is that they draw the not gate truth table with this and then just repeat the inputs or introduce a, a B column when there isn't even a B input, whatever. Now the operation of not is, the logically operation, logical operation of not, the operation of the gate, the operation of the Boolean algebra symbol is to invert the input. So if the input's at zero, the output's one, and you've guessed it, if the input's one, the output is zero. So let me just reiterate what these things show you. Um, this is an AND, operation or an AND gate. This is an OR operation or an OR gate. This is a NOT operation or a NOT gate. And these are called truth tables. Why are they called truth tables? Because they always tell the truth. They always tell the truth. 